Morning. Welcome. I'm glad you all braved the cold. It's nice to see the, the sun out today. So my name is, uh, as Taylor mentioned, my name is Jason. Um, I'm the co-founder and executive director of HQ Raleigh, uh, as well as Think House, which is an intentional living community. Uh, for those of you that don't know what HQ Raleigh does, basically our mission is to create high-impact, high-growth entrepreneurs. We have a physical space, and we rent office space to startup companies. But more than that, we're building an entrepreneurial community. And I'm going to share a little bit about that with you today. And I'm joined by two of my team members here, Allison Sutton and Liz Tracy. Uh, these guys are an instrumental uh, part of helping to develop and create not only the day-to-day -day operations of HQ, but also helping to uh, build the entrepreneurial ecosystem. And so these guys are my, my resident experts today. So when Taylor uh, invited me to come, and by the way, I'm very privileged as a neighbor um, and a big supporter of CAM, I think there's a convergence between entrepreneurship and the arts community, and I'm privileged to be here, so uh, thanks for inviting me. So climate, a very pertinent topic. Um, and when, when I started to think about the theme, I thought back to three years ago and why I moved here. Um, my wife and I were living in Bloomington, Indiana. I had a successful business there. Um, both my wife and I had businesses there, and I had recently exited a company, and we were, we were looking for a new place to move to. And climate, was one of those key factors in selecting uh, where we were going to travel. Frankly, the, the first thing that came to mind, if you can see up here, uh, was weather um, as I was putting this talk together. Um, fortunately, the, the, uh, the, the wall is white, and so you can't see my pasty skin, but that, that, is, that is me with an umbrella and a beer um, wishing that there were sun. Um, so I, I did think that I was moving to North Carolina to get away from the, the gray Midwest winters. Um, fortunately, um, it, it's temporary, I know, and climate is a pattern over time, and we've got a nice temperate climate here. Um, so in all seriousness, um, something I'm extremely uh, passionate about is the entrepreneurial climate. And as we were looking for a place to move, we were looking at several different communities, Seattle, San Francisco, uh, Austin, Denver. Uh, we wanted to move to a place where there's a vibrant um, economic, um, excuse me, a vibrant entrepreneurial community. We could st we start new businesses and, and plug in and be a part of a, a, a dynamic ecosystem. We came here, so about uh, three years ago, we came here over a three-day weekend. Actually, we, we had our plans. We were moving to Denver. We came here over a three-day weekend. We heard a lot of good things about the local community. Um, we came here over a three-day weekend, uh, people were open and collaborative and very welcoming. We say, what the heck? Let's move here for three months and see what it's like. Uh, three and a half years later, we're still here, so obviously there's, there's something about that that we've liked. So, as I, as, so today I'd like to share with you a little bit about the economic, or excuse me, the entrepreneurial climate, which is also part of the economic climate, um, and the experiences that we've had over the past three years. Now, I think I bring a unique perspective in that I looked at all these other communities who um, I think nationally you'd think of, of Austin and San Francisco and New York and Denver as more entrepreneurial places. Uh, but there's a lot of exciting things happening here. Um, so I have a unique perspective as an outsider coming in and seeing what these other communities are doing and then being directly involved in helping to develop the entrepreneurial community over the last couple of years. Uh, we've learned a lot of amazing things. And so with my partners in crime here, uh, we're going to talk to you a little bit about the current economic climate and the things that are happening here and then talk to you about the future. All right. So we first started this, uh, like I said, about three and a half years ago. The community was fragmented. A lot of people doing a lot of cool stuff, but there wasn't a lot of inter uh, interconnectivity or collaboration. Um, I, I tell the story often that when we, when we announced that we were opening up HQ Raleigh, Frankly, I thought I was going to start another company. We were going to do our bit by helping the entrepreneurial ecosystem and, and set up a, an office space with an administrator and maybe 15 or other entrepreneurs. A little bit of collaboration, an inspirational place for us to work. Uh, with, within 45 days of announcing that we were opening, I had over 500 people, 500 people communicate to me within 45 days. That was pretty powerful. So I went back to my, my co-founders and I said, listen, I'd like to, for the next two years, I'd like to work on building the entrepreneurial ecosystem. So as my team and I, we got together and we talked about the last three years, we boiled down 
the basically elements of what we think is an ideal entrepreneurial ecosystem. And we boiled those down into ba basically five major components, which are education, capital, resources, and corporate engagement. So you guys ready to help me out here? So uh, the first major element is education. So pretty crazy ride. So what did we, so we opened in uh, August of 2012. Yep. Um, how many members did we start with? We had about 10 companies join us when we started and today we have about 107 companies. So within two and a half years, it's really exploded um, and it just keeps growing. Oh, can you hear me now? That's just for the camera. All right. <laughs> yeah, so we, we had 107 companies now, um, and we continue to grow as we look to our expansion space. Cool. So talk to me a little bit about so our, our first element of a, of a vibrant climate, or what we believe uh, an ideal climate. Talk to me a little bit about education. Why, why, what, what's going on in the community, and why is education important? Yeah. I think we're, we're in a unique um, region to have uh, education be such an important part of the entrepreneurial community. I mean, we have major universities that generate ideas and generate talent um, that ultimately channels into the companies that work out of our space and work in the region. I think it was, it was last year, um, the major universities brought in over $2 billion in research and development. Um, that's a lot of money to channel through to help investors get patents, to connect researchers with entrepreneurs. Um, and to really be able to generate that next line of talent, who is then going to go and work for companies out of HQ or out of American Underground or out of the Research Triangle Park. I think, too, um, a really interesting piece of the education community here is that we're seeing a lot of the local universities actually work really hard to develop their own entrepreneurial communities on campus, too. So at UNC, you've got the E, the entrepreneurship minor, the E minor. Um, NC State has their own workspace for young entrepreneurs through the garage and through their entrepreneurial initiative. Um, and actually next door at HQ, we're working with NC State to open up the entrepreneurship clinic. So similar to a healthcare clinical model, this is where we've got um, about 15 students in their Pool College of Management working hands on with the startups in our space. So really bridging the gap between what's happening on campus and what's happening here in the startup community. So we're all kind of working together to build that entrepreneurial mindset. Most definitely. Yeah, so the, the next thing that comes to mind is, is we're talking about the entrepreneurial ecosystem. An important component of that would be capital. And I'm reminded of a story in college. I remember showing up for, as junior in college, showing up for a class. Uh, the, the professor's name was Mr. Jameson. It was a corporate law class. Came to class that day, and this guy's like a grizzly old dude. I remember he has this big cracked tongue. Remind me of like an elementary school teacher that you, you see in a book. Um, came into class that day, and he wrote three words or four words on the board. Uh, Cash is king. Three words. And he, le <laughs> and he left. And everybody was scared to death of this professor. I mean, you, you hear of the, the previous class that came out. This guy's a, a hard ass. You know, watch yourself. So the, the class of 40 people, we sat there and stared at this board for an hour. I mean, we literally, I mean, there was a little bit of whispering, but we're thinking this guy's going to come back in. Is this a trick? What's going on? He comes back in the next morning, knowing that we all sat there and were scared to death of him. And he said, if you remember nothing in college, I want, to rem I want you to remember those three words, cash is king. Now, I didn't really take that seriously until I got into the entrepreneurial space. Um, and especially within the, as we build this entrepreneurial community, capital is extremely important. Um, if you look at the, the West Coast in Silicon Valley and you look at the East Coast, there's a lot of capital there and there's a lot of startups thriving because there's, there's, a, there's a ton of money for, for them to work with. Um, so CED, which is one of our partnering organizations, uh, the Center for Entrepreneurial Development, just issued a report. And it's really fascinating to see what's happened over the last couple of years. So from 2013 to 2014, there was a 35% increase in investment into the local area. 35%. There's $62 million invested in the local community. Over the last two years, 
two billion dollars in both invested to, in, the, in the local entrepreneurial community. 65% of that is wealthy individuals that have started companies and are giving back, which is really important. Now in the community that, that, that we um, service, the t in the tech and clean tech industries, there was uh, $278 million generated in that sector. It was a 138% increase over the last two years. So if you, if you look at the work that American Underground, which is another entrepreneurial community, HQ Raleigh, uh, CED, RTP, there's, a, there's an intentional and a concerted effort to bring more capital to the community, and that's, that's really nice to see. Yeah, I think um, one really great example of that is with Seventh Generation. So some of you might be familiar with um, this company. They're, they make eco-friendly household products. You've probably seen them at Harris Teeter. Um, and they're based in Burlington, Vermont. They're a global company, but um, about a year and a half, two years ago, they opened up a venture arm of the company seeking to fund social entrepreneurs. And their CEO, John Replogle, was the president of Burt's Bees, was down here in the Triangle. And when they were thinking about you know, opening up this funding office, he decided to bring them here, and they're actually out of HQ Raleigh right next door. Um, last year, they got a $30 million investment from Al Gore's investment fund, and their first acquisition with that money was in Gamel Design out of Design Box. So they've invested um, in the Impress Coffee Press. So it's really cool to see this global company open up an investment branch here in Raleigh and then keep that money here in our community. Which is a perfect seg segue to our, to our next topic which is uh, corporate engagement. So I'm a, I'm a firm believer that, um, that the sustainability of the entrepreneurial ecosystem is dependent on the larger corporations, companies that have been there and done that and have the intellectual capital and the money to reinvest in the community. Seventh Generation is a perfect example. This is a Vermont-based company that saw opportunity in, in basing their, um, their venture arm here. Really exciting to see. What, what other kind of um, partnerships or opportunities do you see in the corporate engagement space? Yeah, last year, um, one of our major focuses was how can we get more corporations to engage with the startups in our space and in our region? Um, and so one of the things that we reached out to do was we partnered with Citrix and then Red Hat came on board as well to start a venture accelerator here right out of the Citrix new building. Um, and they had launched an accelerator in Silicon Valley. They were looking to expand it. We were able to convince them to bring it here. And since then, they've actually expanded it into India. They're bringing it um, potentially to Australia and beyond. But the thing that was really neat about it is it provided an opportunity for five external teams and then two internal teams within Citrix to go through a 12-week accelerator get $30,000 in seed fund, and then also be able to get mentorship and resources to be able to push their companies forward. So um, we look to try and see how can we continue to engage the corporations to have the talent that's there kind of engage with the startups that are in our space and in, in this area. Yeah, and I, I'll just add to that that, for instance, Red Hat, I mean, you, you've got a huge brain trust of people there. They're really engaged. I mean, it was, it was awesome to see them get involved in the accelerator. So you have really smart people within their company, and they're basically empowering them to create their own ideas within their company. And then hopefully those ideas will come out into our space and the entrepreneurial community. And that's really, that's how you, you continue to seed and grow the entrepreneurial space. A huge amount of impact. All right, um, so as I mentioned when we started this, um, we're not just a physical space next door. So we have 15,000 square feet of space. We have over 100 companies that participate in our space. But really, I would say maybe 20% of what we do is the physical space. Really, we're community builders. And a lot of what we do is we bring resources to bear. So Liz is at the helm of that part of our business. So why don't you talk a little bit about the resources that we, we bring to the entrepreneurial community. Sorry, Allison, was that your turn? <laughs> So I think we're at an interesting point in, in the region. Um, we're kind of at this point of opportunity where the resources and the, the talent is mature enough that we can have access to important talent and important resources, but it's not saturated enough that 
companies are fighting tooth and nail to actually get the resources that they need. And at HQ, we spend a lot of time curating resources for those startups. So, I mean, we bring in your general accounting help, lawyers, marketing professionals. But beyond that, we've had over, well over 100 people in the past two years that have reached out to say, hey, I really like what's happening here. I want to give my time. Um, I want to be a mentor. I want to you know, spend an hour or two with a company. I want to invest in a company. Um, and to, to see that many people come forth and say, I want to be part of building this community. I want to be part of building this ecosystem, um, I think is really telling of the area. Yeah, so and a lot of what Liz talked about is this whole idea of people contributing and giving back to our community. And that really leads us to the next uh, element of, uh, of an ideal entrepreneurial ecosystem, which is open community culture. The reason why I chose he to stay here over Denver was just that. Uh, I don't know if it's the Southern hospitality or what it is, but um, you know, I was welcomed with open arms. And to think three and a half years um, I'm at the forefront of helping to lead the entrepreneurial community, and I'm as well-connected as I am. That says a lot about our community, and I do, really do believe that that's a distinguishing factor. We've had a, a bunch of venture capital and other company, companies coming here recently, and that's reaffirmed by comments that they're, they're making, right? We, we have a mentality of, you know, we're, we're open door. You know, hey, come sit down with me. Come have, have coffee with me, and that's really powerful. Can, can you guys talk a little bit more about our community and some of the things that are happening? Yeah, I think a really good example is um, Innovate Raleigh. Um, have any of you guys been to Innovate Raleigh? A few of you? A few hands? Okay. Um, about three years ago, there was a group that got together, about 200 people, that wanted to push Raleigh forward in terms of innovation and entrepreneurship. And so when they got together, there was definitely voicing of what they wanted to, to see, but there was also action. So three of the major things that came out of that initial meeting in 2012 was, one, a direct flight from Raleigh to San Francisco. So there was a connection between Silicon Valley and the East Coast. Um, a physical space where startups could gather, and then a resource web where people could access the resources that are currently in this area. Um, within six months, HQ came on board. Within three months, that flight came on board, and then CED took on the creating the, the web of resources. And so I think what's really distinguishing of our area is that we're not just voice, we're also action, and a lot of people are willing to jump on board and actually make that action happen. And to add to that, this may be a little bit of a shameless plug because I'm helping to run Innovate Raleigh, but. Um, what we're doing now with that organization is also really telling of this desire to collaborate. Um, so we have started a campaign that we're calling Innovate 365 so that it's more than just this annual summit in September. It's really providing opportunities for the community to come together throughout the year. So we have committees that are focused in a lot of these different areas helping us to progress in making Raleigh a top five center for innovation and entrepreneurship. Um, we bring people together for meetups, for volunteer activities. Um, we have a radio show every week now where we're interviewing and kind of telling the story of different creative and innovative people and players in this ecosystem. So um, it's really all about providing more of those opportunities for collision and for collaboration. And um, last week we were supposed to have our February meetup, um, and it was rescheduled due to the weather. We had over 150 people sign up for this meetup, did some last minute schedule changes, and still had about 70 people show up to our, our rescheduled date. So that just goes to show you how engaged the community is and how um, actively all different types of um, people from different backgrounds, we've got educators and city officials and entrepreneurs all working together to really build this climate. Absolutely, and Allison touched on a couple things. It's, it's interesting, most of the people participating in Innovate Raleigh aren't necessarily entrepreneurs. And so a lot of times people look at entrepreneurs as people that are, had an idea and are starting a business. It's not necessarily true if, if, you, if you look at um, different communities where uh, the entrepreneurial communities are really strong. The arts community is a big part of that. Um, the, the government and civic engagement, that's all a big part of it. So to me, it's about creating a culture of entrepreneurship. 
and all of us um, thinking creatively and looking for solutions to our problems. So I like to try something here. Well, I'm not sure if this is going to work, but we're going to try this. Um, so Liz, if you could hold on to this and throw this out to the crowd. Now, when, when you... <laughs> Please, wait, so catch this, hold on to the string, and make sure to hold on to the string. Just remember that part of it. So there's right. any that you can oh, excuse me. Yeah. So Liz is going to throw the string out to someone that she's worked with or collaborated with. Okay. Victoria? So is that Victoria? Victoria? So Victoria, if you could hold on to that and, and throw it to someone else in the room that you've worked with. Give yourself a little bit of... <laughs> It could be someone up here, too. <laughs> yep, so hold on to the string and throw it. There we go, nice catch. <laughs> Cut a little bit of hair there. And actually, to make it easier, those of you that have the string, if you could stand up, please. So, An Angelique, if you could do, we're going to do one more. If you could throw it to someone that, that you've worked with, make sure to hold on to the string, though. All right, so everybody, everybody pull that tight. We had the time we'd do this about 20 more times um, so listen there, already there's some interconnectedness here right and that that shows the strength of our community so jen throw that to someone that you you haven't worked with and you'd like to collaborate with All right, and if you, could, if you could do the same thing, throw it to someone that you, you'd love to work with. <laughs> All right, everybody pull that tight. So this, I mean, this is a representation of our community working together. Allison, drop your string, but try not to strangle the person right in front of you. Okay. Um, Jen, drop your string. Okay. So when we're not working together, things break down. We feel like we're, we're on an island. You know, we're not as effective. We're not as efficient. It's one of the main reasons why I worked here, or I moved here. Denver? I was a part of that community, and I, I didn't feel like it was isolated, it was walled off. Um, I really didn't feel that sense of connection or that sense of community. Allison, please pick back up your string. <laughs> Jen, please pick back up your string. So I challenge you all today um, to get involved. Get involved in the entrepreneurial community. It's, it's hugely impactful. We have, we have social entrepreneurs, we have impact entrepreneurs, we have tech companies, all different sorts of people making a difference. Um, just as I came in here, we were talking with Cam about a, new, uh, a, a potential partnership that we're moving forward with. So you think about entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is about changing your community. It's about impacting your community. So I challenge all of you to get, in, uh, to get involved. Um, and before we, we get to question and answers, I'd like to, you guys can drop the string. <laughs> I'd like to talk to you guys a little bit, just give you a taste of what the future is and holds. So we really do feel like we're in an ideal entrepreneurial climate. Um, a couple of the things we have on the horizon that you guys might uh, find exciting are we, we're developing 50,000 square feet of space. So that's 50,000 uh, just next door here. So the idea will be an extension of what we're already doing. Um, we're also learning, to, uh, <clears throat> looking to serve other entrepreneurial sectors that maybe uh, need, need the support of the entrepreneurial space that, they, that haven't already. Um, some of you may have heard uh, that Stone's Warehouse down in the eastern part of Raleigh 
is going to be developed into a food and beverage incubator um, where you know, basically we're going to help uh, food and beverage startups uh, test their market uh, before they scale. And there'll be a, a lot of economic impact that comes out of that and training and, and bringing employees on board in that space as well. So um, thank you for your time today. I'm honored to be here. And with that, we'll take some questions. Like with like Citrix, one thing they're doing um, with the the accelerator, for example, and this is a, obviously a larger scale, but they chose two internal companies to spend a couple months going through the accelerator too, so that although maybe they're not launching a venture, they're able to think about approaching problems in a new light and, and be able to kind of drive. Um, like they're looking at share file and how do you kind of reinvent that or how do you um, push that forward a little bit more. Um, and I think having gone through that 12 week program for those four employees within the company was a really interesting way for them to be able to um, think in a different light and feel connected to um, the entrepreneurial community but still stay within their job. So that might be. So you probably, if you're doing sales, you probably have client meetings and dinner and you know, you're know you meeting with people all the time. And something that might be interesting to get some of these B2B companies that aren't exposed to the startup environment is maybe invite them to one of the startup events in the area. I mean, we kind of joke around like we could probably eat and drink for free every night of the week because there are so many events happening all the time. Um, and those are a great chance just to see that energy and that community. And so instead of you know maybe meeting a client um, at a dinner, bring them to like Startup and Play or um, one of the entrepreneurial happy hours at the RTP or something like that, just as a way to, to showcase all of this um, community that's happening. Yeah, I, I would just quickly add that I think that um, the so we, we have a set of core values that we've created as people apply to be a part of HQ, um, and that's really helped as people have entered our community. Part of that is for us to empower people and create a sense of community and for people to get involved. And so I think if you create those expectations of community and helping each other out in those types of things, um, we've seen a lot of amazing things happen. You know, people working together. A, a lot of great things. So as opposed to just you know going to a mixer and handing out a business card, I mean people are actually getting intimately involved and in, and in, uh, volunteering their time and really being a part of a community. One of the things that that we work on it's uh, we we started something called the Think House, which is basically a learning and living community for postgraduate entrepreneurs. So I'm a young person, I've got a good idea, I'm graduating. What do I do? Do I go take the job or do I take a year of my life to explore this idea? that I've been working on. And so it's, a, it's an 11-month program. Um, you live, learn, and innovate with a group of your peers. Uh, you go through a, a lean startup program. You get to work out of HQ. So really, it's built as a, as a springboard for young entrepreneurs. And so we, we bought a house over in Boylan Heights. We completely redeveloped the house. And then each year, we have a new crop of people. We're on our, our second class crop of people that, that live in that house. And so just it's another way that we're you know, we're trying to keep talent here. Um, and our hypothesis is if you give young entrepreneurs the networks, um, a little bit of programming, um, and you um, give them a little bit of mentorship, uh, they can have an impact earlier. Still, our mission is to create high impact, high growth entrepreneurs. So at the end of the day, it's not about how much money we're going to make off real estate. Um, if we have uh, an entrepreneur that brings another company down in the warehouse district and hires 800 people, that's a success for us. Or if we have a company like Bobble that's developed a self-filtering water bottle that's you know, saving 250 plus plastic bottles from the environment, that's the impact for us. So that's really how we grade ourselves and our success. Um, but we're bursting at the seams. We've had a waiting list for um, over a year now. And so in order to, to meet that demand, we're expanding. Now 50,000 is a big jump from 15,000, right? Uh, but we hope to... Um, We'll expand our footprint, we'll expand our current concept, but we'll also provide graduation space for larger companies. But there's also things like um, hardware incubators and design 
Um, and you know, we've even had conversations about arts and entrepreneurship. So a bigger space gives us a greater ability to um, you know, help those entrepreneurial sectors that maybe aren't being supported. And probably we're looking at, we're probably looking at 18 months, a year to 18 months. Yeah. So I, I, am, I am all about the triangle. I am all about the region and I love Raleigh. <laughs> you know, I love it all. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunity in Durham. Uh, I mean, there's, there's opportunity all over. So, and I, I think that a lot of people have this rising tide floats all boats mentality. And so there's a lot of collaboration happening between the regions. Um, you guys have anything to add to that? Yeah, so um, we actually are um, working with a team in Greensboro um, and they're gonna be online coming in the spring. So part of it too is looking at what are cities that maybe don't have kind of a, a center for entrepreneurship yet, and how can we help give them the resources and kind of jumpstart that so that we can continue to have that web of tentacles? Because, I mean, Durham um, has some great things going on. Chapel Hill is growing, but look at the regions where maybe it's um, not as far along, and how can we jumpstart that a little bit more? Or how can we partner with organizations in those communities uh, to bring them value and vice versa? So we work with Packard Place in Charlotte, for instance, we have a reciprocal relationship with them. We're friendly with uh, some communities in Asheville and then throughout the triangle for sure. So there's that interconnectedness, there's the partnership, and then, you know, we're definitely, we're opportunistic. So the Stones Warehouse thing came available, helping to develop the uh, food and beverage space. They came to us, you know. Um, we've got a good amount of experience in building communities and building entrepreneurial communities, and that's kind of an underserved um, sector. Um, and so, you know, so we agreed to, to explore that. There's some cool stuff online too. I mean, we're part of something called the National Coworking Visa, and it's a really organic thing that happened. Um, cities all over the world um, who have coworking spaces can put their space up there. And so if you travel, you can then instantly connect with the centers that are there. So um, there's a lot of that kind of happening in an organic form um, that we've been able to kind of be a piece of. And, and I would just mention too, our Think House concept, we look to expand internationally. Um, so that, that's a connection. I think a couple of the co-founders, and actually these two as well, we're, we're, we're global <laughs> citizens. Um, so we definitely, you know, I, I own a business that does, um, does work overseas. I would say you've come to the right place. I mean, if you look at what's happening to this region, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I ever believe these rankings, but we're consistently ranked in the top five of communities that are growing. That can be a good thing or a bad thing. For the entrepreneurial space, I think it's, it's really exciting. Thank you for all for coming. Um, Thank you. Great.